Hi everybody and welcome back to my art channel. In today's painting tutorial we're going to recreate this gorgeous winter scene together step by step in acrylics. I'm going to show you exactly how to recreate this painting and we'll do it in real time together. Today we're going to specifically look at brush techniques and how to use a fan brush to achieve these gorgeous trees. So if you enjoy the video, hit that like button, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. I'm uploading a new tutorial every week, so to make sure you don't miss out, please subscribe. I'm also really excited to share with you guys that I am launching my own online painting course. I know that there are a lot of you out there that maybe feel stuck in that artwork and you're not quite getting the results that you want from your painting. I've been there. Trust me, I've been there with every roadblock you can imagine. And over the past 10 years, I really feel like I've managed to improve my artwork and to come out with a painting that I'm really happy with at the end of a painting session. And I really wanna share the tips and tricks and things I've learned with you guys to help you in your creative journey too. So if that sounds like something that you'd be interested in, check the description box of this video and I'll pop in there a link to the course with more information on the course and also a place where you can join the waitlist. Um, but anyway, back to today's painting tutorial. Let's paint this wintry scene together. So today's painting tutorial is going to be a beautiful winter wonderland with northern lights and beautiful snowy winter trees in front. Uh, the colours I'm using today are titanium white, magenta, sap green, light blue permanent and Prussian blue. And also Payne's grey, which I'm going to pop there now. And I apologise for a few of the paints that I started running down. Um, that's just because my palette is vertical, so <laughs> I apologise for this melted paint business. And the canvas I'm using is a canvas panel, which are absolutely brilliant for practising. And this is size 9 by 12 um, I will show you the brushes that I'm using, but I really want to encourage you to just use whatever brushes you have to hand. Uh, this is a flat brush in the size 18, and this is just a fairly cheap acrylic paint brush that I'm using. Then I have a fan brush, which I would really recommend for this tutorial. Again, it doesn't matter about the brand. This one is by Terry Harrison, um, but this will be a really great tool for creating trees. And then I have a small detail brush, just size four in the shape round by Princeton Velvet Touch. And this is just gonna be used for little details at the end. So they're the brushes I'm gonna be using. Again, feel free to use whatever you have to hand. I also have a jar of water here and an old towel to wipe my brush on. Okay, so to begin, I'm just gonna dampen off my brush and using a bit of the Prussian blue, I just want to block in where we're going to pop some of these trees. So I want my main focus of the tree to be about here. And then it's just going to be some nice simple shapes of winter trees in the background. So that is a very rough sketch, <laughs> but it doesn't matter because we're going to be painting over this anyway. This is just as a little guide. So first we're going to pop in the background, the sky, which are going to be northern lights and it's going to be beautiful. And I'm not going to use a particular photo reference, um, but feel free to use a combination of reference photos that you might have found online or just go with your instinct and add whatever colours you like. You don't have to use the colours that I'm using today. Feel free to go wild and create your own scene. So I'm just going to rinse off my brush and get a little bit of water, not too much. And first I'm going to paste in like the dark sky. So I'm going to take some Prussian blue. I'm going to add a little bit of this magenta. And I'm going to take that, especially in the corners, 
um, because I like to have dark corners in my paintings. I feel like it draws your eye in. And in the sky, I want the brightest area to be behind this big tree because this is going to be the subject of our painting. So what I want is a really nice light background here so that the, the tree sort of jumps out even more with a high contrast. So I want dark corners and fairly dark edges. But most of all, just have fun with it and experiment. We kind of get ourselves stuck into a rut of wanting our painting to look perfect and be perfect. And actually, it's a, it's a lot better to shift our perspective and to think, what am I going to learn with this painting? How is it going to further me in my next painting? And that's a really nice uh, sort of attitude to have. And it takes that preciousness away and really helps us to be more creative. I'm going to add a little bit more magenta in there and add that in. And that's going to go, give a lovely, rich, purpley feel. And feel free to blend this as much as you want. I kind of like the uh, brush stroke feeling, so I'm quite happy to leave my brush strokes in there. And, but if you want like a soft transition, really smooth blending, feel free to spend a little bit more time doing that. I kind of like that painterly feel that when you get up close, you kind of see them brush strokes. And I love that dark Prussian blue, it's beautiful. It's so intense and dark, yet so much vibrancy at the same time. So because it's the Northern Lights as well, I'm gonna do a nice little side to side blend in motion. Just to blend that out really nicely. may have picked up a bit of blue there <laughs> that's fine <laughs> in fact that was going to be my next stage anyway is to take some of this light blue and i'm going to take this from the bottom quite thick because i want it to blend out and i'm going to take that across the sky and blend that through i most likely i'm going to be adding more layers on top when it's dry. So it doesn't matter too much um, about the vibrancy and if it blends and gets dulled a little, because I think I'm gonna go over and pop it on again, but I just wanna get this really nice blend with that Prussian blue and magenta. It creates a really nice haze. I'm going to use a sweeping brush stroke to give that a nice blend. Maybe just going to take that up from the bottom slightly as well. Okay, I'm going to wait for that to completely dry before we go on with the next layer. Brilliant. So when that is kind of touch dry, I'm going to take my detail brush and I'm going to use this to add on some more details. I am also going to use my bigger brush. Um, not with any paint on, but just a little bit damp to blend it through. So I'm going to use both brushes in conjunction with each other. And this is kind of a painting technique that um, is quite handy. And very often we can just think, oh, I'm using one brush at a time. But maybe to use two, it can be beneficial. It all kind of depends on the way you work and your process and practice as well. But it's nice to give it a go and see whether it works for you. And um, so I'm going to take some of the light blue. 
And I'm gonna pop a little bit of green into that to make this really nice aqua color. And I kind of want it to be very vibrant, so that's okay. And I'm gonna take this into what we've already done, but it's just gonna add another dimension. So I'm gonna add little streaks in. Then taking my wet brush, I'm just gonna move that up and down to blend that through. And if it's picking up a lot of the paint, like it has done there, you can just rinse it off in your water Take off the excess water with your paper towel and then just keep on working that in. So you can be completely free and wild, just adding these strokes wherever feels right to you. Or you can use a bit of a reference photo and follow that more closely. I'm going to add a little bit of a haze down here as well, just to blend those colours in together. And you can see that because we let the layer previous dry first, it's not blending into the background layer it's just sort of sitting on top and that's because what I'm using on top is quite a vibrant color and it could get dulled quite easily so I wanted the first layer to dry so that it didn't kind of pick up that dullness okay so at the minute I've got like two bright streaks I want a third um, because everything seems to happen in threes that looks good. So I'm going to pop another one down the middle here. The rule of three and all that. Okay, lovely, and I'm going to rinse off both brushes. And now we're gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna add a little bit of white to that same mixture. So we've got a bit of the blue, a bit of the green, and then white. And I really wanna make this nice and bright here. because This is gonna be a really nice contrast. So thinking where my tree is, so I don't wanna put like too much detail here because we'll be painting over that mostly. Um, so maybe here, I'm just gonna pop in a little bit of that brighter color. And then using a damp brush, just blend that through. And let me know in the comments if any of you have seen the Northern Lights in real life, um, even if it wasn't you know, one of these spectacular shows that you've seen, even if you've just seen it a small amount, because I remember in the news a few weeks ago that uh, something to do with a sunburst or something like that <laughs> meant that a lot of people could see them. So let me know in the comments. Unfortunately, I couldn't see them here where I live, but one day it will be my dream to see them in real life.
Okay, lovely. So I'm gonna let that uh, dry now. And then we're gonna add some more pink in, I think. Well, I would like some more pink in mine. So I'm gonna rinse off my brushes. And using my small brush, I'm just gonna take a little bit of the magenta. I just wanna add that in to just bring that vibrancy. And using my big brush just to smooth and blend that out again. Okay, that's it. I think, I think I'm happy with that. Oh, and I've just gone and done something I wish I hadn't have done. <laughs> yeah, okay. I think I'm gonna leave it there. She says as she keeps working on it, which is what I always do. Never know when to stop. Okay. Just a little bit more blend in here. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna leave that. So I'm gonna rinse off my brushes. Um, and then I think we're gonna start working on trees. So I'm gonna wait for this to completely dry now because I don't want to pick up the paint that we've just put down. And um, so when this is um, touch dry, so it shouldn't be too long, uh, we can start adding in the trees. And <laughs> I feel really sad for my sad paints. They've like gone on my easel and everything. So that's okay, we can scoop them up. So let's work on the trees. This is exciting. I'm going to take my fan brush and you don't have to use a fan brush. Um, it's just a lot easier because you can use the shape of the bristles to create your tree. And what I will say, if you're not familiar with using one of these is to have a little practice before you go straight in on your painting, uh, maybe just on a sheet of paper and just get used to the bristles. Maybe try to create a tree um, just so you kind of understand how to use it going into the trees right so i'm gonna just wet it in some water and take off the excess water so it's damp but it's not like soaking wet and i'm gonna take some of the Payne's gray and i'm gonna pop that on my palette oh i'll pop it here because what i was gonna suggest is adding a little bit of this light blue in with it so i already have some of that in the background <laughs> So I'll just mix that in a little. It's gonna just create like a nice gray, um, but it's nice because it's got a bit of color. It's not just black and white. It's got a little bit of blue tinge as well. And because it's gonna be sort of reflecting the sky because they're gonna be snow covered trees and obviously snow will reflect what's above us. So it's nice to use the same colors that we have in the sky. Okay, so what I'm going to do is start popping in the background of some of these trees. So I'm just going to use just sort of kind of nothingness motions really and just using my brush just to fill in some of this dead space here. And usually I would like to cover all the white and not have any gaps showing through. But I don't know, because we're gonna be having like a snow theme, I might just leave that and see how it goes. Leave some of those little bits of white showing through. So it's kind of just like a bit of a base layer in a mid gray. And then we're gonna go over that and we're gonna add um, darks and lights too. 
okay i'm happy with that that's cool so let's wait for that to dry and then we can go on top with our trees and start building that forest together so rinse off your brush and we're going to wait for that layer to dry okay that's awesome so let's get on with the the final part of the painting which is adding our trees in i'm going to take some Payne's gray onto my fan brush and this, I suppose, could be a little bit scary painting over what we've created, but don't be too scared. And my one tip with the fan brush is less is more. So we can always add more at the end, but let's just start off really light and just start a uh, sort of like carving those branches in. So I'm just going to take that fan brush down. and using it at different angles to just create that tree shape. And obviously we want the middle bit to be more thicker because that's where the trunk is so I can pop in a little bit more going down the center. I think for, for now, I'm gonna leave it there. So see how easy that was to put in that tree? So fast with the fan brush, they're really brilliant. Now I'm gonna do the same technique and build up those trees so that we've got a little forest growing. I'm gonna take the next tree, just starting a bit low, cause this is a subject of the painting and this tree here is sort of going to be in the background. And then I'm just going to do the same here. down here I'm gonna add in like a big tree this is gonna help frame it and help the painting feel enclosed okay I really like how this is coming together and um, so just carrying on I don't want to hide too much of what we've done. So these are just going to be some background trees. I'm going to take the height up again, maybe to here, again to have that sort of like enveloping feeling, being surrounded by the trees. So I'm going to make this tree a little bit taller again. Okay, 
so I think I'm gonna leave the background of the trees there. I'm gonna rinse off my brush. And next I'm gonna take some of the paints gray and add some of this light blue again. So now what we're gonna do is add like the snow onto the trees and we might instantly think, oh, I'll add white because snow is white. But obviously it's gonna be sort of like a nighttime feeling. And um, what we wanna do is, uh, like we said earlier, reflect the sky above. So I'm gonna be using a similar gray to what we used earlier, just maybe a fraction lighter. And doing very similar to what we've just done, um, but maybe just a bit less, I'm gonna start to use my fan brush on the trees to mimic that snow, just hanging off those branches. Okay, so I'm gonna wait for that to dry again. Lovely, so when that is touched dry, I'm gonna take my detail brush and we're gonna work on these trees a little bit more. So taking some light blue, just adding that into that mixture. We're gonna to start to just define these trees a little bit. So starting from the top, I'm just gonna add some little details. Don't want too much. going to add some little highlights that is going to bring that tree to life a little bit more. So I'm just adding some little uh, lines to sort of define the shape, mostly. It's nice to be able to build the bulk of the tree with the fan brush. And then you can go in and add these little details, which sort of breaks up that pattern of the fan brush, makes it a little bit more uh, realistic. Okay, lovely. I'm just going to go and do that the same on maybe not all the trees, but maybe uh, just the ones in the foreground. So I'm going to do the rule of thirds again and do this tree and these two are here. I'm 
And you'll notice again, we still haven't used bright white because uh, it's kind of all subjective. I think like I can sometimes think, oh, snow is white, so I'm going to go for the white. And that is so tempting. But actually it creates a lot more of an atmosphere if we stick to just a few colours and kind of use those colours to create our dark and lights and the warm shadows and cool shadows. Okay, and then just the same for this little tree over here. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna do is add in some little stars into the sky. So taking my round brush, I'm just gonna add in some white right onto the edge of my paintbrush. And I'm gonna dot some little stars into the sky. I'm gonna try and do some in all different sizes. I'm gonna make this uh, this star here like slightly larger than the others to sort of draw your attention because I think it looks so good on this darker background. Okay, 
so I think that's pretty much done. I'm really happy with that. And um, feel free to go extra on the stars or add more colors in the sky or even add more details into the trees. I'm gonna leave it there for today because I don't want this tutorial to go on for too long. Um, but I would love to see your versions of this tutorial. So make sure you tag me in if you post it on Instagram, Facebook or Twitter. And thank you guys so much for following this tutorial and supporting me on my journey. Um, if you'd like to get more studio updates, then feel free to follow me on Patreon. I will put the link in the description box. And I uh, hope you have a beautiful creative day. Thanks guys, bye.